All right, welcome to another video. Today we have Justin Kahn as a guest. So Justin Kahn is an entrepreneur, investor, and recently a content creator. He founded multiple startups like Kiko, Social Cam, Atrium, but most of you know him as the co-founder of Twitch, which got acquired by Amazon for $970 million. As an investor, he was a partner at Y Combinator, investing and in mentoring new startups in the Valley. Today, he has a fund called Goat Capital with Robin Chan. Oh, and by the way, let me know if you want a new partner for your fund. I don't want to flaunt my wealth, but I have about 20 large already on a Joma Capital, so. All right, we'll take it. Really? Okay, great. <laughs> he recently started a TikTok and a YouTube channel that is doing extremely well inspiring people to start their journey as founders. So welcome, Justin Khan. Thanks for coming. Doma, welcome. I Welcome. I, you're inviting me. But thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Great. So I just first wanted to ask you, like, you know, what, what's up with the, the YouTube channel? You know, for a guy who can be working on anything, like, why, why YouTube? Yeah. So I, I guess it's specifically because I get to be working on anything that I love YouTube. It's been really fun for me to flex my content creation muscles and try to create my own brand of edutainment. I'm loving it and having a lot of fun with it. Nice. That's awesome. So like, what's your, what's your main goal with the YouTube channel? When people watch your channel, what, what do you want them to get out of it? I love just teaching people things. So some of the things that I'm most proud of in my career is just the times when I've been able to help someone out, give them some advice, whatever it is. And uh, that's what I want to do at scale through my YouTube. I had a, someone come up to me at a conference a year ago, or maybe a year and a half ago before the pandemic, and he gave me a hug and he was just like, you know, Justin, you talked about seeing a therapist and now I'm seeing a therapist as a founder at a conference. And so it's just moments like that that have really made me feel like I'm contributing to the world in some small way and just try to do more of that. Yeah, that's really that's really nice. Um, when did you start uh, seeing a therapist? Is it after Twitch or before Twitch acquisition? It's kind of before. So I was working on this other company that I was incubating. Uh, was, I was creating called Exec. And it wasn't going really well. And I just was super depressed about it. Out of desperation, I went to see a therapist. And I was just like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I? Why can't I? Do anything? Why am I not motivated to do anything? Mm -hmm. The company wasn't doing well, and I had tied my ego up in the company. You know, so I told all my friends, or told our investors, my employees, this is going to be the biggest thing ever, and I'm. I, I really had wrapped my identity up as a being a successful founder, and so when the company was not successful, that's that really was a blow to me. And I spent all of my time instead of being in the present in this present moment, I spent all my time in the past thinking, oh, I should have started a different company. I should never have started this company. I should have done something different. Or I was spending time in my future, like how am I going to talk to my investors about how this isn't working out? Or, you know, I, I was just I was just always caught in, in, in ruminating about the future or, or feeling sorry for myself about the past. It was just easy to forget the, you know, the, 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 what was good about my circumstances and then just be caught into this negative feedback loop. And so for me, it's like, yeah, I was had the successful other company that my friend was running, but then this company that I really cared about today wasn't working. And so it was easy for me to get to forget about that other side of things. So I, I actually brought you here to because I want to quiz you on Twitch. All right. I want to know how much the Twitch co-founder actually knows about Twitch culture. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions throughout this interview. And if you get more than half of them right, you'll get a prize. And then <laughs> Each time you get one wrong, I get to pitch you a startup. How's that? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. This is going to be embarrassing. No, I think, I think you'll do pretty well. I think you do pretty well. All right. So I even prepared a PowerPoint for this. Oh, yeah. So I, I actually made a whole presentation on our merger, but we can skip that. <laughs> I like it. Um, okay. So first question what does poggers mean? Poggers is like, oh shit. <laughs> it's like when you're excited about something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Oh, okay. I think that's really good. Yeah. It's when you're excited yeah. about something like this face. Yeah. Poggers. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. All right. That was an easy one. We'll, we'll do something a little bit more difficult. What is okay. the name of this emote? Kappa. I know that one because I, that guy used to work for me. 
Oh, really? Wait. Yeah. So, so what happened is a funny story. Josh, this who, who's this guy, uh, was a programmer. He was like a young guy who was working at Twitch as a programmer. And in the early days, this is before we even pivoted to Twitch. And we used to put all the founders and early employees in the chat as emotes. So if you type in J Con style right now into Twitch, my face will pop up from 12 years ago or you know 15 years ago or whatever it was. Um, but we stopped doing that after we hit like eight employees, right? Because it was just too many emotes. And then eventually Josh took over the chat code and he saw this code base and he just added himself. <laughs> Most of the you know hotkeys or like the, the text that people would, that were was representative of each of us was like much longer, you know? But he, he made his Kappa because that was like his nickname. It was very short. And I think because it was short, people started using it a lot. And so that's how it became popular. All right. So the next question is, what does no cap mean? I have a feeling you won't get this one. <laughs> well, I mean, no cap in other contexts means like I'm not lying. Oh, but like, okay. is that, I assume, is that what it means on Twitch? Yeah, I assume so. it, yeah, that's what it means. Okay. Well, I guess you got that too. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, for some reason, I, I thought you would get these wrong so I could pitch you startups, but I guess not. Okay. <laughs> you can pitch me the startup anyway. It's okay. All right. Speaking of like startups, let's go back to startup questions. Um, yeah, you, when you talked about exec, uh, you then actually mentioned what exec was about. It was an error running service. It was like a live error running service, and you could just, it's kind of like Uber meets TaskRabbit. Mm -hmm. You just put in whatever you want into this text box, and then we would try to deliver it to you. But eventually, that idea didn't really work, and so we turned it into something that was more like uh, a cleaning service, like an on demand cleaning service, which was a terrible business. Oh. Well, there were like during the time when we were working on exec, everybody was all these venture capital, you know, funded companies were were scaling these these businesses with extremely low margins that they were giving uh, basically giving away money to users. If you were going to start a company today, I wouldn't start a cleaning company. Yeah, I, I, I would start something like Twitch. I think, you know, if I had to choose, <laughs> it's not, probably Twitch. If you had, <laughs> if you had to choose, exactly. Yeah. So, wh why did you think? Uh, Twitch succeeded then, like when you worked there, uh, you know, in the beginning? Well, I think what really worked is my co-founder Emmett identified that gamers were what we wanted to focus on. And Kevin Lin, who is uh, our COO, they went to gamers and asked them, like, what can we do to make you stream on Twitch? What can we do to make your experience better? And so they spent a lot of time doing that and just really creating that tight feedback cycle with the customers and talking to the customers was huge. That's what made them, mm -hmm. um, that was what made them come and stick and really feel like they were listened to. Mm. You know, your customers want to be loved and they want to feel like you care about them. And so if you listen to them, that's a really great way to show you that you care. I'm guessing that you guys had like an exponential growth, right? Because it's such a good product. It started, it started multiplying in users. It grew really quickly. Once we pivoted from Justin TV to Twitch, mm -hmm. uh, Justin TV was our first company. That was kind of like this live streaming company. Uh, for anything, and then we turned it into Twitch. You know, as soon as we started working on Twitch, it kind of grew and grew and grew very consistently. But it wasn't exponential. You know, it was, it was kind of, it was with fits and starts. You know, it would like grow some, and then it would stop and grow. And because we were very dependent on live events, some months where there would be like really big live events, it, it could be really big, and then other months it might not be as big. Mm -hmm. So when you have these huge big events, did you ever run into like scalability issues, infrastructure wise, or? people-wise? I mean, anyone who's knows who's been on Twitch knows that we ran into a lot of scalability issues. So I'm not going to lie. We did a lot with a small team, though. We built this, uh, you know, data set, data centers and like streaming um, points of presence, like all over the world, 16 locations with a team of like less than four on the network engineering side. So we, we scaled quite a bit, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was still, there was still some occasional downtime. So when you started um, Twitch or, or Justin TV, you said that um, you weren't really a great programmer, right? Yeah, I was not a good programmer when we started mm -hmm. Justin TV. So what but were I you learned to be at? a decent one. <laughs> I was, I'm a really good catalyzer of people. Catalyzer. I'm really good at getting people excited about an idea and getting together and, and executing on that idea. How, how did you get that skill? Do you think it was just um, you were born with it? You know, I've I guess I've always I've always been excited about new ideas and I can't help but evangelize them and so I think that's been a big part of it to be honest. Mm -hmm. 
So your weakest asset, like, would you say programming was your weakest asset compared to the other co-founders? Or? No, no, no. My, my, well, I was much worse as a programmer than the other co-founders for sure. But I think my weakest, you know, skill that I probably would have benefited me to be good at was on the management side. You know, I was a pretty weak manager in the, in the beginning. Cause I, I didn't have any experience. We started the company before we had ever really had a job in the real world. Mm -hmm. So what are some tips and tricks to becoming a better manager? What have you learned? Okay, the basics, right? You gotta talk to that, your team members regularly. You have to regularly schedule one-on-ones. Like that took me years to figure out. And then <laughs> it's like, you need to write down feedback and tell people feedback and ask for feedback, right? Like. It's like people are scared to give feedback. I was so scared to give people feedback because I thought they'd be offended. They'd like run away. They quit the, their job. And so for me, that like just the realizing feedback's a gift and I need to invest in, in giving people feedback was a, was a big part of it. Those seem like really basic things, but you know, if you're a new manager, they're like, you know, they were, those are, those are gems. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest things, the books that was really instrumental for me is this book called High Output Management by Andy Grove. And anybody who has been in Silicon Valley long enough has been, you know, affected by the lessons of it because it's, it's kind of a Bible here in Silicon Valley, but it's a great handbook for any new manager. So I was wondering if you have to tell my viewers like a, a few tips in like how to start a startup or just the way to start a startup, like what tip would you give them? Well, the first thing is just get started. You know, like a lot of people have it in their own mind. They're like, Oh, I can't do this because it's too hard. I don't know how to do it. I like, I don't know where to start. Like the first step is the hardest. You know, if you're building some sort of app or website, like anybody can learn the skills to do that now, you know, it's, it's very accessible. And so you don't have to be a genius programmer to do it. You could just get started. Like the way I taught myself to build my first website is I was just Googling tutorials on building websites online, you know? And so I think getting started is the first step. And the second thing I'd say is like, work on something that you care about. You know, I think it's so important to work on something where you would work on it even if you weren't getting paid, you know, because that's what's going to, that passion is gonna, what's going to drive you when things are tough. You know, it's going to make you stick with it. And so uh, I think a lot of people choose what to work on based on what's going to make the most money or because, you know, they're very mercenary about it. But I, I think it's so important to work on something you actually give a shit about. When do you get in the zone? Like, like what, what's, what's passion for you? <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, when I'm making content, I think for me, I'm often in the zone and that's why I like it so much. You know, I love to just brainstorm ideas and write and then film. Like that's what I like doing. So to me, that's like, it's like a hobby and I'm not getting paid because my YouTube channel only has, you know, <laughs> 20,000 subscribers or whatever, but, uh, you know, maybe one day I will, but it doesn't matter to me. And I think that's why I like it so much. Mm -hmm. I think by the time I release this video, it might be like at a hundred thousand, I think. All right, my YouTube, I'll, I'll re-record that. My YouTube <laughs> channel only has 500,000 subscribers, so <laughs> I'm not getting paid, but you know, maybe one day I will. I'm pretty sure you get paid at 500,000 subscribers, but yeah. All right, let's take a break and uh, we'll come back with more quizzes. Yeah, so these breaks are actually perfect for me to put ad breaks. So it's actually for me. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, oh, I actually have a, a funny thing I forgot to ask. Uh, yeah, so before we go to the quizzes, um, I, I heard that during your senior year at Yale, you posed for a charity calendar you created. And like, is that, is that you? Oh, that is. I'm very proud. I'm proud of it. That, that one's cut out. There's like, you know, the original has, I'm in like a, a the, the kitchen of our uh, kind of dorm room or dorm house, the house that we lived in in college. And uh, yeah, that's me. It was, it was, oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you. The story behind that is that at lunch, just then when I was talking to him on the phone, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this calendar. I started talking to some people who were like sitting next to me about it. And I was convincing them to pose for it. And I said, you know, to convince them, I said, I'll do something more ridiculous than whatever you do. Like if I'm asking you to like rub rose petals on yourself <laughs> in the shower, I'm going to, I'm going to do something even more ridiculous. And so they said, you know, they, they agreed. And I got friends of mine to like, one of my friends was literally rubbing soap on him in the shower, uh -huh. in the shower. One was like lying on the pool table covered in rose petals. 
And so I had to go, you know, I had to make good on my word and do something that was just even, even more extreme. That is crazy. Were you, were you always this ripped? I mean, to be honest, I looked a lot better than that last year, but then really? I got into this. Yeah. I, I've been, I, I was, you know, working out pretty heavily for the last couple of years. And then, then I got into this accident and uh, broke both my elbows. So my workouts have gotten a little bit weaker. Yeah. But, you know, I'll always have this photo. Right. That's the important part. That's pretty cool. I mean, I also have a more recent picture of you. Uh, I think it's this one. So this is what you look like now, right? <laughs> this is, the, that's my body, yes. Yeah, that's, that's my body. Very nice, very nice. But yeah, okay, All right. let's go to the quizzes now. Um, okay, these ones are actually harder. Like you might, you have to watch a video and stuff. You just have to watch like five seconds of it. And then you have to tell me what the streamer is talking about. Continuing to load. You know, for for someone who sold his company for nine hundred and seventy million, you kind of have pretty slow internet. <laughs> the slow. My internet's fast. It's my computer, it's like a slow piece of shit, which is <laughs> weird because it's like a Mac. You know, like top of the line MacBook. I'd like what? And maybe I have too many tabs open. Uh, that's weird. There's a risk for reward, right? And even even the majors like Oriana Death would be told like, like, right? But Lux players, oh no no no, oh no 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 guys, no 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 guys. Is this guy like cosplaying something? <laughs> He's like doing ninja stars. Watching, 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 watching. Kind of. For people who 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 understands, it it makes complete sense. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh my right. god, he's. Now, now he's shooting up an airport. Oh, oh, that, that's a different clip. <laughs> I feel like that's a different clip now. <laughs> All right, so I'm guessing okay. you have no idea. Huh, finally. No, I have no idea who All that right. is. So he was, um, he was talking about League of Legends. Yeah. He, okay. He was talking about how this character is so cheap and doesn't take any skills playing it because it, you just do for ching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, dude, I never played League. Oh, really? Even though it was like one of our most popular games. Do yeah, you play I, any yeah. video games? Yeah, I played Hearthstone. Oh, okay. Like a nerd. Intellectual game, of course, whatever. <laughs> a anything yeah, and else? I, played, I used to play Call of Duty like in two, uh, 10 years ago. Oh, okay. FPS. Nice, nice. Do, do you know about the game Valorant? No. Uh, it's, a, it's a newest FPS shooter. It's, it's made by mm. Riot Games. But anyways, oh, excellent. I could pitch you a startup. All right. Okay. All right, let's, let's see. It. Which one should I choose? Let me look at my list. Aha. Okay, this one's actually pretty good, I think. Like, it's it's a real one. So it would be IMDB or LinkedIn, but for YouTubers. So YouTubers can hire, like, editors, videographers, thumbnail designer. You'll have a bunch of YouTubers profile, and you have a bunch of, like, editors profile, and you could have, like, you know which editor has worked with which uh, YouTubers right away. Or you could click on a certain video that they've made, and you could see who worked on it. So you can hire people who are already in the industry or like the YouTube industry. That's interesting. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I wonder why that hasn't existed for normal film and TV production. Oh, it does. It's called IMDb. <laughs> but do people hire people off IMDb? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really in the industry, but I think they do look at, they, they have to, they have to download, uh, sorry, they have to pay for IMDb Pro to actually see yeah. the whole cast list. And then yeah. I'm guessing that's what they do, yeah. That's actually not a bad idea. I feel like it, it could work the, you know, because there's so much, this, like like I said, on the influencer economy side, it's becoming the whole economy. Like YouTube pays out, what, $10 billion to creators every year or something? Yeah. I mean, it's a huge industry now, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. see it. Not bad, right? Not bad. All right, cool. All right, let's go to another question. What is the name of this emote? Uh, I don't know. That's a Pepe the Frog, right? Yeah. Oh, you got that right. Like this one, you, to call it, you have to write "feels bad, man," which is why. Oh yes, Pepe feels the bad, frog man. Is, is sad. All right, one more startup. Okay, let's see. Uh, social media for YouTubers with a hundred K subscribers plus. Anyone below it, they can't join it, so it's more exclusive. Oh wait, so you can't join it. 
Oh, dude, that's cold. That's cold. But I have five hundred thousand subs now. By the time this video is, I, I really launch. hope you don't. <laughs> so this joke works. <laughs> um, that would be cool. It, it's kind of like a uh, like a exclusive social network, mm -hmm. like Raya. What's Raya? It's that like dating app that you have to be, you know, like get approved to join or whatever. Right. I, I think. I think there was another one called something else. Called it's it was called Elites or something. I don't remember what it was, but I think I got approved. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice work. Yeah. You're in the elite now. Yeah, it was pretty easy. I think they accepted like hundreds of thousands of people by then. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. And then the last question is: At this moment right now, which category has the most viewers? I'm kind of assuming it's like just chatting or Fortnite. Oh my god, you got it right again. Well, I think I don't know. It, it, it was it was just chatting an hour ago. Let's let's see if it changed. Twitch TV. Okay. Da -da -da. Oh yes, Twitch just chatting with three hundred and forty three thousand viewers. Yay! Hooray! It, it will look less awkward with the editing. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so it. I'm not. I didn't fully embarrass myself. No, I don't think so. I think you did really well. To be honest, you almost, I think you almost got every question right, except for like two. Anyway, so the prize is you have won a $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, it says 50 here, but it's just like a stock image. But it's it's $25. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. I'm going to buy myself some camera equipment. Yeah, I, I don't think you can buy anything with $25, to be honest. But. I can buy like a... a uh, what is it? One of those quick release plates for my camera to fit on my tripod. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, the expensive ones are a little bit like fit more expensive, but yeah, I guess you could buy a cheap one. Um, oh shit! Yeah. You're shading me and my camera <laughs> purchases. Yeah. All right. But yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, right? It's like history repeats itself. You know, first Amazon pays you nine hundred seventy million, and now they're paying you twenty five dollars. It's crazy. I love it. Yeah, I yeah. Love it. Actually, you're paying them to pay me twenty five dollars. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> cool 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 all right um yeah i think that's pretty much it well you know thanks for coming justin awesome yeah thanks was, for having me this is so much fun yeah i'm glad you enjoyed it and i'm glad you got the quizzes right yeah all right all right i didn't look terrible <laughs>